aircraft engines, radios, vaccines, and, believe it or not, the simple wheeled luggage. Any of these goods provide us with further pleasant, practical, and linked lives. However, what is the way they came to a realization? By innovating, for sure. However, still, there is this question. How is the innovation created? Sadly, many individuals do not grasp the way. Even though innovation has been the means of propulsion for technological developments and civil achievements, this concept has not been grasped fully. However, when we investigate creativity all over the history of humans, we may start to grasp the circumstances that make ingenuity flourish. This summary examines the features after the most amazing innovative advances of humanity. Furthermore, it discusses that innovation has been a gradual, disordered, messy undertaking that depends on cooperation and communication of ideas independently. In the following, you will go through the reasons for margarine being illegal in short, the way small pus may stop smallpox, and the thing frying pans have in common with atomic bombs. One innovating has been a complicated, messy, and collaborative undertaking. The age of industrialization, the huge advancement in fruitfulness that started our contemporary ages, started at the time people initially adopted the force of steam for making things work automatically. For accomplishing that, they utilized a novel device named atmospheric engine that worked with steam force. For whom should we have gratitude regarding this amazing success? Dennis Papine. Wait for a second, we might also need to be thankful to Thomas Savory. Wait, wait, maybe Thomas Newcomen was worthy of our gratitude? To be correct, these three all had contributions and are worthy of credit, however, not one of them may declare all. The reason is, during the 1700s, these three constructed their unique versions of this device. Until today, nobody knows which of these three had been the initial producer or had the most contribution or who had impacted others' work. People tend to link novel ideas with just one inventor. Yet, this has been oversimplifying the way innovation works. No matter how creative they are, inventors do not isolate themselves while working. They have been impacted by the instruments, ideas, social environment, and technology they are encircled with. That frequently stands for a lot of effects participates in innovation, although only one individual gets the whole achievement. Take a look at the incident of this atmospheric device that works through steam. That comparatively basic engine cools and heats the water inside a cylinder made of metal. The switching pressure coming from steam produces motion that may be utilized in tasks such as siphoning water from mines. Might any of those three individuals invent that device by themselves only? No, that was not like that. The fundamental concepts after the engine were trending subjects of scientific environments around those times. Savory and Papine, two knowledgeable individuals, purified their opinions by swapping papers and letters with other capitalists. Furthermore, Newcomen, the person that constructed the most accomplished model of the device, is dependent on former developments in hammersmithing technology for finishing up that device. Therefore, all these three men's idea was an output of the things they were impacted from and their environment as well. That idea is valid for every invention. Although all the credit regarding the invention of the light bulb during 1879 is given to Thomas Edison, the reality has been that over 20 inventors had patents on alike gadgets in the previous decennary. Every thinker was replying to technologies and ideas that were trending at that moment. Certainly, some ventures were greater compared to other ones, however, these inventions did not occur solely by themselves. Two innovations in medicine have big risks and surprisingly bigger winnings. Although the atmospheric device that worked with steam started the age of industrialization, medical developments thrived with its process of innovation, similar to the subsequent, first stage, meet a person who is healing from smallpox. Delicately scratch pus from an open lesion the patient has because of smallpox. Second stage, with a needle or knife, make yourself a wound in the skin. Do not injure yourself too deeply, however, you need to have a deep enough wound to take blood off from the wound. Third stage. Scrub the contaminated pus to your open bruise. That method is named, engraftment. Most of the time, this will build smallpox immunity in you. It may look risky and disgusting to you, however, just consider the way it came in view to an individual in Europe during 1700. People did not understand the reason this functioned scientifically, however, it was working. 
Therefore, why? Th the advancement of that hundredth year, this application is seized. This application protected people from death and in the end guided to the realization of contemporary vaccination. A quirky truth regarding innovation has been that the greatest inspirations do not arise with intentional exploration or solid theories of science every time. Rather, innovation builds up step by step in time with random probability, in addition to a lot of trials and failures, as individuals search for feasible ways out from difficulties they face. For the area of medicine, that's an especially risky procedure, however, this led to applications that saved lives. Look at the water stocks of Jersey City. During 1908, a fast advancement in the industry polluted the waters of this city with unhealthy drainage. The conclusion had been a significant cholera epidemic along with further illnesses. For solving this issue, in hurry, Dr. Leal poured limes chloride into the city's water as an antiseptic. For that moment, including chemical compounds into waters had been thought revolting. People of the region were in disgrace. However, Lille had learned that in the cities of Europe this was functioning, thus, he experimented that anyhow. After months, it is observed that the trial was worthy, and illness proportions decreased. Shortly after, societies from everywhere in that country pursued the path of Jersey City. Can we see unrestricted trials done these days? Sure. For instance, vaping, in other words, electronic cigarettes are some examples. If you ask a lot of people, taking an electronic cigarette in hand has been the initial stage in leaving smoking. That might be extensively life-saving because usage of tobacco has been a very big reason for deaths among people. However, we do not completely understand the impact of electronic cigarettes on health, therefore, their usage is left contentious. Some nations such as the UK stimulate the utilization of vaping. However, some nations such as Australia prohibited electronic cigarettes. Do we know which nations are correct in their attitude? No, we need to observe the developments. Three innovations in traveling have just been about gradual advancements. Sands Pareil, Puffing Billy, and Salamanca. These titles may look funny to you currently, however, during the initial times of the 1800s, any of these were associated with the little steps people have in advancing traveling. You got it, at the initial times of the 1900th year, horses were the chief in going from one place to another. But innovative people had faith in a device that a locomotive powered with steam might replace horses. The problematic portion had been finding the way to construct one of them. Thus, engineers worked a big deal on distinct styles, naming each model with a daring novel title. Each machine could not be successful, however, some of these advanced the pace, reliability, and security greatly. Starting with 1829, the locomotive constructed by Stevenson, named the Rocket, was skilled in moving 13 tons of goods with a speed of 30 mile per hour. The earth was near to be shaken with railways with this development. People were searching for more rapid, trustworthy means for traveling throughout the history of humans but they could not find a novel way of moving from one place to another in an excellent shape. For instance, the systematic, shiny devices that we currently use for transportation had been the conclusion of numerous people working on numerous little technical and style advancements in time. Observe the development of the cars of this day. Most of these devices are dependent on engines that are internal combustion for power generation. The Franco-Swiss cannonry administrator, de Rivaz, constructed this device's most primary father around 1807. That used oxygen and hydrogen, which was noisy, cumbersome, and could explode any time. Around 1860, Jean J. Lenoir from Pennsylvania upgraded this model and made it work with petroleum. Yes, that was an improvement, however, the machine had not been efficient enough. Afterward, around 1876, a grocer Nicolau Otto redesigned the device by accompanying a four-stage process of ignition and compression. Named the four-stroke motor, this design permitted to have more efficient operations. That model was embraced by Carl Benz, a German innovator. Around 1894, he increased the power of this motor and utilized that to energize a three-wheeled device named Motorwagen. Although the motorwagon had been a trend among the wealthy, that stayed as a reform. That acquired a further innovator, Henry Ford, for providing the car to the public. 
Around 1909, Ford's production technique in assembly lines allowed the automobile, named Model T, to become reachable by masses. Shortly, automobiles became a widely used transportation method. That required years of slow going, consta. NT advancement, however, the motor had eventually beaten usage of horses. Four innovations do not need to be well-grounded things, many have been just great ideas. Just observe the unpretentious potato. That delicious root has been fundamental for a lot of appetizers and meals we enjoy this day, however, that had not been the instance every time. That was not like that in Europe, at the minimum. Some creative thinking was required. Initially, over 8,000 years previously, fertilized around South America, Andes Mountains, this route was not presented in the previous times till the middle of 1500. Yet, for years, European people approached this route with doubt. The English church prohibited the vegetable. French people thought potatoes are a reason for Hansen's disease. However, gradually, humans loved this strong, nutritious root. At first, the opinion to eat this root is seized around Belgium. Afterward, this opinion was disseminated all over the continent. Starting with the 1800s, this root became a novel fundamental ingredient in the kitchens of many European nations. Frequently, the notion of innovation is deduced to the notion of invention. In other words, we consider innovation being the procedure to create products that could be touched by hand such as devices that would cut labor or technological tools. Yet, a portion of the greatest innovations made until today has not been tangible items. Rather, they have been ideas that uncover novel paths to consider this world or find solutions to issues. An innovation we utilize each day has been the Arabic quantitative structure, in other words, numbers, are intangible. The notion of utilizing one, two, three had not been in place before. That quantitative structure was initially constructed by academics in India in AD 5000. Arabic merchants, afterward, embraced it around the 1900th year, and eventually, this structure found its way to Europe during 1200 through Fibonacci, the Italian writer. He supported adopting Arabic quantitative structure since this structure was more efficient compared to that time's famous numbers of Roman. Their main benefit was the positional structure. Although V meant the five number in Roman structure any time, the five of Arabic numbers transformed its worth according to the location it has in the sequence. Therefore, a five and a zero afterward meant a quantity that was ten times more. That looks similar to a little transformation, however, that unlocks an entire novel environment for maths. After the adoption of the Arabic numerical structure, it has been practicable to conduct further modern computations such as division, multiplication, even algebra. It became further simpler to retain documentation of finances and conduct accounting. Embracing the notion of Arabic quantitative structure had been an innovation important for making Europe start a novel era of commerce, business, and explorations in science. Five people's willingness to get in touch with others let many innovations be realized rapidly. 1843, Maryland. The party Whig has a Congress and makes Henry Clay come to the presidency. That is huge news, and frequently the conclusions would come with a train in over one hour to Washington. However, that year, the conclusions came within seconds. What was the way? Of course, the telegraph, the novel invention developed by Morse. The device transported information through a hanging wire by forwarding electronic signals. This has been the initial efficient innovation that emerged in the area of communication through electronic technology. The phone comes some time afterward, around 1876. The cableless radio comes after around 1890. With the change of the hundredth year, individuals that are far away from each other started to be more linked to one another than any time before. Yet, that was only the start. Throughout the years, communication innovations and IT would be transforming the earth we live in. Communication had been either through tangible items such as books, letters, etc., or individually by speaking when people are together before the initial dashes and dots of Morse in the telegraph. Ideas could be disseminated slowly and which information one has was dependent on the book or material the person could reach to have on hand. But the discovery of communication electronically such as telephone, telegraph, and in the end, computers transformed anything, and rapid. That is challenging to exaggerate the pace people embraced the novel technology for communication. 
The initial telegraph wire was constructed around 1844. In 1855, 42,000 miles of wires were built just in the U.S. With the finish of 1870, the wires for telegraphs reached through the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. The radio had an alike track. That started with one station around 1990 and developed to become the major means to communicate publicly in 1930. Furthermore, computers turned out to be vital tools of our lives very rapidly. Dot. That is especially because of the pace the technology of computers advanced and made smaller. The working skill of a computer has been decided by the number of transistors it owned. Little advancements allowed transistors to become more miniature and simpler to build up, constantly permitting to put further transistors to a smaller room. That notion has been named Moore's Law. Therefore, around 1975, one standard chip of computer owned 65,000 transistors. Currently, this quantity reached billions, and they are much less expensive. Thanks to the Internet, currently each of the computers on this Earth could connect, and now disseminating information became simpler than any time before. The innovation of the Internet transformed the political area by providing big strength to people that can dominate the technology of communication. Currently, the Earth's most impactful corporations become searching tools such as Google and Facebook, which is the emperor of social media. Six innovations are dependent on luck, cooperation, and reunification. The frying pan you have that does not allow foods to stick, the outerwear people wear in severe weathers made of Gore-Tex, atomic bombs chamber in fluorine gas. Do you know the one mutual thing they own? They have all been innovations founded on PTFE, in other words, polytetrafluoroethylene. This material was initially amalgamated in 1938 accidentally. A scholar working on coolants kept the gas of tetrafluoroethylene at glacial degrees. That chemical hardened to a solid matter which was abnormally steady and could endure the heat. That was not useful to be a coolant, however, other scholars discovered that for contexts other than cooling, this matter might be utilized for further things. The tale of PTFE has been beneficial since it shows the complicated path of innovation that functions. All tales of innovation have been distinct, however, when you observe scrupulously, you will understand that they frequently pursue an alike structure. A lot of big innovations start with some accident. Somebody experiences a fortuitous moment, an abnormal awareness, or a lucky happening. Afterward, some other people take over the finding and implement that to novel conditions. By trying and failing, these people implement the novel invention or idea in distinct circumstances till they discover an efficient usage place. Think about the contemporary activity of utilizing DNA for argumentative proof in incidents of crime. There is no person to embark on building this innovation. Rather, this started around 1977, at the time a scholar of Leicester University, Alec Jeffries, worked on constructing a technique utilizing DNA for detecting illnesses. During accumulating samples, he observed that DNAs were very alike to fingerprints, in other words, everybody has a distinct code in genes. Lucky finding. At that time, the regional defense was having a hard time solving a horrifying crime. These people were curious about whether the finding of Jeffrey might assist them in solving the puzzle. Therefore, Jeffrey and the policemen investigated together. They started accumulating and refining over 5,000 samples of genes taken from regional doubtful individuals. Afterward, they contrasted these samples with the DNA they discovered in the location of the murder. Finally, they discovered the matching person. They solved the riddle. Since a lot of innovation passes this structure, that is likely to detect situations that there has been more innovation potential. Innovation flourishes at the times individuals their ways cross, get along, and share ideas. This is the reason that, for years, commercial centers, universities, and big cities have incessantly generated innovations. When there are distinct individuals with distinct specialization fields, backgrounds, and viewpoints gather in a location, these places advance the kind of cooperation that brings up innovation. Seven often, innovations are not top-down. Around 1924, officials of Britain desired to construct a non-military aircraft that could travel through oceans. That brought up the inquiry. Could this job be done by the officials or should it be given to private parties? They determined to work on both ways. 
The government got in touch with one public laboratory and one private company, Vickers, for constructing two planes. What do you think about the outcome? Starting in 1930, Vickers had created the plane named R-100, a lightweight, speedy, and robust plane. This plane went to Canada and came back without any issues. During that time, the public laboratory constructed the plane named R-101, a bulkier, more expensive plane. It went on to travel to Karachi and Pakistan, however, it could only reach France since it collided and caused the death of 48 people in it. Those two distinct results demonstrate a very significant aspect. Forthright government supervision and management have not usually been the response. There has been a famous concept that innovation needs management and money forthright from officials. That discussion postulates that private parties, with a continuous journey to gain simple profits, would refrain from the expensive R&D required for constructing fully novel ideas. Rather, companies would stockpile patents and just reconsider former goods. However, do you think this practice has been correct? No, it has not. Although that is correct that official supported research allows for huge explorations, it frequently requires the innovativeness of companies for making them efficient innovations. Look at the Internet. Computer networks simple components were constructed by an American public agency for defense research. But the WWW did not come up for an ordinary daily requirement till private parties such as Cisco started an investigation with that technology around 1980 and 1990. That force happens since huge public projects frequently are not responsive to the requirements or wants of households. Furthermore, they could be leisurely to embrace novel, unique ideas. But huge corporations may struggle with this inclination as well. This is the reason no matter how big the company, it can be taken over by the new small companies. Do you recall Kodak? That corporation had been at the peak of the field of photography undisputedly. Their chief good was the film camera. Therefore, around 1975, at the time a scientist they have constructed an initial model of a computerized camera, the company did not pay attention to that innovation. The people on top could not observe the possibility his large, computerized product had. However, some small firms could. They constructed new goods that transformed and seized the industry. Therefore, Kodak lost the chance of being the chief in the new market conditions of digital photographs and around 2012, went into insolvency. 8. There will always be counteraction to innovation. Have a look at the dairy department in the regional grocery shop. You will observe a lot of options from butter to margarine placed near to each other with an excellent order. The selection of the product is left to you. No, that was not the case at any time. At the time margarine is discovered initially, that created a disorder. The fatty product had been more steady and less expensive compared to butter. The industry of milk products, afraid of the rivalry, made a brutal movement contrary to the product. Fake findings from the Dairy Association of the Nation demonstrated that margarine was harmful. In 1940, two-thirds of the states in the U.S. had prohibited the usage of this harmless fiber. Certainly, in the end, the fervency is calmed, and margarine turned out an embraced product. However, the fight demonstrates that no matter how innocuous your innovation is, it may create dispute. At the time a completely new invention or idea comes into the environment, that would frequently be denied. The reason for that has been the anxiety of transformations. Furthermore, developed industries would not like to put their dominion in danger. That is the reason horse raisers opposed to tractors or pickaxes wanted to suppress the advancements for refrigerators or music producers desired to prohibit radio production places from broadcasting recordings. A method special interest societies work to lower the pace of innovation has been by spreading anxiety regarding security and safety. Think about the incident of GMOs. These organisms like rice that was added vitamin A owns the possibility to provide less expensive nutrients to individuals throughout the earth. However, societies that had been contrary to GMOs dogmatically, such as Greenpeace, pressurized a lot contrary to the generation of GMOs but the proofs they provided for showing the dangers of GMOs were weak. A further technique that is utilized to have innovation back has been introducing hostile implementation of laws of intellectual property. If one can implement these in the right means, they motivate innovation by providing inventors with the special utilization of their ideas in a short duration. That lets the real inventors earn profits. 
However, according to the things we grasp, innovation necessitates exchanging ideas and enhancing the work of other people. Sadly, copyrights are expanded incessantly, letting this procedure to be harder further. Around the U.S., copyrights were utilized to be valid for 14 years. Around 1976, that had been expanded to be valid for the time the writer is alive and 50 years on that. Around 1988, 50 years had been expanded to 70 years. Those laws are not beneficial to the real inventor after death anymore, however, they are beneficial for retaining great ideas from being seal. Ed away from possible novel utilization areas. Do you think innovation is at the risk of turning into a substantial cease? It may be, however, that is not true for always. In the following chapter, we will discover that pressure. 9. Around the Western, innovation has been inadequate, however, thriving in other places. Let's think about our world around 2050. Which Oz would you observe? Maybe you observe a structure of medicine that allows therapy on genes and treatments of stem cells would remove many cancers, allergies, and further miseries? Or perhaps a web of transportation that AI drives automobiles rapidly and securely? Maybe a development in sustainable energy will bring us infinite power by nuclear fusion? Inquire yourself. Can we find the perfect future one day? Do we follow the correct path? By observing the condition of innovation in this day, it may be difficult to tell this certainly. That might be dependent on the location you are living. Around the majority of our world, the previous years are full of amazing successes regarding innovation. Just within ages, nations in the west part of the world went from a mostly farming economy to a powerhouse that is electronic and automated. No matter how developed we are, currently, any time looks like introducing new advancements in fields such as computerization and communication. However, with those transformations, further fields stay weirdly stable. Regarding transportation, there has been no transformation. Around 1958, the standard plane utilized for trade moved at 600 mile per hour. Currently, they travel at a similar pace. There were improvements in the boundaries to features such as fuel effectiveness, however, the foundations did not change. The corporate environment as well stayed stagnant. Around the U.S., novel corporations had 12% of the whole economy around 1980. Around 2010, these corporations were just 8%. Throughout the Atlantic, anything was way more stagnant. Observing Europe's worthiest corporations, just two of these were less than 40 in the age. The majority of the industries look like further concentrated on saving recent profits compared to developing innovations. Where has been the place of innovation? Innovation has been around the arising countries such as China. For the last years, China spent a lot of labor and resources on novel technologies and urbanization. Currently, corporations from this country such as Alibaba and Tencent became the chief in the raising fields such as finance and social media. Furthermore, universities in China have been achieving big progress in areas such as editing genes and AI. Could the West part of the world keep pace with? Perhaps. That might need a rebuilt soul for innovation. Corporations would require to undertake more risks, employees would require to work for more durations, and officials would require to encourage the independent and free sharing of ideas that powered previous explosions. All these, with some luck, would allow innovation to return to countries' schedules. How Innovation Works Serendipity, Energy and the Saving of Time by Matt Ridley Book Review The notion of innovation has not been a sudden ingenious practice realized by lonely smart people. That is a lengthy, messy, and complex procedure. Innovation happens at the time serendipitous meetings and lucky intuitions are exchanged, revised, and enhanced by many people. Novel ideas are gradually and leisurely advanced in time with people's findings of efficient utilization areas for fresh inventions. If we would like to see further innovations ahead, we require to encourage the free sharing of information and go under huge risks as a person, corporation, and country.